So hi guys, welcome back to a new Photoshop tutorial. My name is Manny, you can still find me on Twitter at MannyPhoto. Today I want to show you guys the Puppet Warp Tool and talk a little bit about the Puppet Warp Tool. Now all of you advanced guys out there, I guess you already know about Puppet Warp and liquefying and all that stuff. So this is mainly again for the newbies. If you want to learn how to work with Puppet Tool, this is the tutorial for you. I'm going to show how to work with it, how I use it and what I like about it. Let's get started. Okay, so before we start, I quickly want to show you guys just here is the before and after, before and after. So showing you just with the Puppet Wall tool, a simple technique how to stretch your pixels a little bit better and that it not looks distorted or fake in a way. Now it obviously looks fake, we just had the sexy look over here, the sexy mouth and now we have the super Colgate smile which looks fake and is not real. So this is just for the technique today, it's not what I would do to this image. So don't take me wrong here. Then as well, if you're advanced, you might know already about liquefying and puppet warp tool. This tutorial might not be the best. But any case, so let's get started. First of all, what I want to show you guys as well is that you can use again here under liquefy the tool. But I just think with the puppet warp tool, you've got more control over actually merging and stretching your pixels here. So I'm a fan of actually working a little bit with the puppet warp tool. Now before we start working with the Puppet Wall tool over here, you guys can see that I already have just my basic layer. If I'm going to go now to Edit and go all the way to Puppet Warp over here, it's basically going to take my complete image and I can just Puppet Warp everything, which I don't really want. I just want to, so I'm just going to disable this here, I just want to Puppet Warp this little side here of the mouth, as you guys can see before and after. So for that I'm not just going to select this little area around, say for instance if I'm going to do a quick selection I'm not going to just say this little area and say a puppet warp around this because it's going to be a little bit harder for me and it's going to look a little bit stretched here on the sides. So I'm just going to press command D quickly. What I'm actually going to do is just take a big selection around here, so somewhere around there. I'm going to take the whole mouth and now I'm going to press Command Z to copy and Command V to paste that again. So over here again, this is the area that we've just copied with a new selection. So now I'm just going to rename that to Math2, OK. And I'm also going to convert this to a Smart Object. So I'm going to press right click here and say Convert to Smart Object. This is because if I'm going to work with the Puppet Warp tool now, I can quickly always jump back into the filter again. Even if I accepted everything, I can afterwards jump into the filter and tweak it again. So we have it as a smart object. And now what we're going to do is going to go to Edit. We're going to go to Puppet Warp. And first of all, as you guys can see over here, we have our new mesh with the whole Puppet Warp tool just around our new area. So first of all, here at the top again, you've got a few options here in the option bar and you can play again with your mesh, make it bigger, expand the pixels, also change your density, the mode and show mesh or don't show mesh. So it's a little bit of a handy tool as well to work with. So don't forget about these little options here at the top. Okay, so before I even start merging stuff around and distorting stuff, I just wanted to show you guys a quick thing here. If I want to put an anchor point right here into the center, I can now obviously move my whole mesh around. So that's one thing of using it, but I don't really want that. So I'm going to press Command Z just to put everything back into its place. And now I can I actually place this anchor point over here and it can actually work like a little axe. So I can also go over here place an anchor point over here and now take this anchor point and just move it around and stretch already my whole selection here but as you guys can see it's kind of working like a fixed point over here and I can use it as an axle, use left and right, stretch it around it. Okay, I'm just going to press command Z, bring everything back again or actually going to disable this again. So just going back to edit, puppet warp again now what I can do is I can actually set a few anchor points. So we're not moving around this complete area. We obviously just wanted to stretch this little side over here. So I'm going to put an anchor point over here, an anchor point over here. And don't get me wrong, you can always go back to that anchor point, touch it again, and then you can move it. So it would, don't think that once you've placed the anchor point, it's fixed. You can always go back in again, also select it, press backspace, and delete it again. So I'm just going to go through now and create a few more anchor points so I know everything is completely fixed and it's not moving around. Okay, so we set in a few anchor points over here and there, so we have quite a few now. 
maybe also one down here so I don't want to stretch these areas too much just a little bit over here okay so basically what I'm going to do now is just go over here to the left hand side again put an anchor point over here or just a normal point whatever you want to call these little dots and now I'm going to take it and just stretch that up a little bit so moving it up a little bit Okay, a little bit further, and now if I think, okay, it's getting just a little bit too weird, I can actually place another anchor point over here, stretch that down again. So, like I said earlier, it's just giving you more control of what you're actually doing without struggling with the liquefying tool, merging it in here a little bit, over there a little bit, so this tool is pretty handy. Okay, then also placing another anchor point down here, and I'm just stretching this out a little bit, maybe not too much. Okay, and the top one a little bit further so we get that super colgate smile. And now also the mesh is just a little bit distracting and I don't really see what I'm doing. So what I can do is also go back here to the top and just disable show mesh. So now I already have a better idea of where we're going with this whole thing. I can also turn off the lay here, I guess. No, that is not working. Okay, so anyways, let's go and keep on our mash again. I'm happy actually with the whole mashing and whole distorting that I did. I can now say yes, accept that. Photoshop is rendering that and we have our new smart object here. Obviously, as you guys can see underneath, we still have our smart filters active. I can go back again and disable that, but obviously we want to keep that for the moment. Now we still need to refine the edge here. So basically I have to create a little mask on this. So going down here to the mask icon, select the mask, also a black foreground color, so switch that again. Now with my brush, painting on 100% opacity and flow, I'm also going to press Control alt just feathering my brush a little bit, making it a bit smaller. And I'm just going to refine this little edge over here and painting back the original pixels from the back. Okay, and refining that. Okay, and that's already all. Now I already can see this is my before and after, before and after. So just creating again that fake Colgate smile. Okay, I can put also it in a group here and just call this mouth 2 if I want to. But then again, why did we also now change this to a new smart object layer here? If we are now already painted our mask art and we're happy with it or not happy with it, we can quickly always go back down here in our Puppet Warp filter, the smart filter, double tap again onto Puppet Warp and our whole Puppet Warp uh, tool that we just did in our adjustments come back up and we can now go back in and just refine small things again. So say for instance the lip down here didn't look too great, so I can just open that and merge that in a little bit again. Say accept that again. That renders again and it's again on our new layer here. And we don't need to just do the whole process again. So for me, working in the smart object um, filter here is pretty handy and I have super, oh, so much control over this. Okay, yeah, so that's all for today's tutorial, guys. Please give me a thumbs up, support me with a like, leave me a comment down below, let me know what you think about Puppet Warp and all this little Puppet Warp thingy keys. Then as well, subscribe and hope to see you next time in a new tutorial.